But yeah, y'all, I'm just, because I don't talk to nobody during the week. So y'all are the ones that I talk to as of right now. I can't be like, girl, guess what I found, blah, blah, blah. I just don't have nobody like that right now. So, and I talk to my husband all the time about stuff. And I'm like, man, I need some girl talk, like for real, some girl chat, for real. I need a mommy who I can talk to. I need, you know, moms that are in business, that are entrepreneurs and trying to build something. I need moms who are wives and stuff like that. Like, I just need someone that relates people, not someone, just a group, a tribe. So, you know, I've been praying about that, not as often as I should be, but I am praying about you know, God, I'm ready for a tribe, my tribe, like, even right now, I'm saying it, Lord, I'm ready for my tribe, you know, of women that get me, because I've gone through so much relationships, and friendships, and what I thought was best friend stuff, and I'm just ready for that group of women, you know, that they don't, you know, not all of them necessarily have to be just like me but married or moms they're entrepreneurs like we just have a lot of stuff in common and the past for the past I would say two or three years I've had women come into my life that are like that but for some reason we don't connect fully and they end up leaving and I have somebody that you know I may check in with every now and then or you know hey girl how you doing how's everything going how's the family y'all know those type of relationships but it's not like a bff type of situation and i'm ready for that lord i'm ready for my tribe you know i didn't know back then how to pray for that like how to because i've stayed away from relationships for a long time like i just, i did i really did and i think the last person that i was in a relationship with not like I'm saying it in like friendship, you know, um, like that. Well, y'all know what I'm talking about, but because I got the steering wheel in the camera. But the last person that I connected with that I thought we would be really cool, cool friends, um, she actually lived, she lives here in Georgia now. Um, and me and her connected around the time when my husband and I were trying to move here before, but it just wasn't the time for us to come. We were really, really, we were getting really, really close. We talked a lot. Um, we had a lot in common. The only thing is that, like, we had a lot in common. The only thing for her is that she was going through a separation in her marriage. So, um, but we connected because we were in the same business. And we were in the same business together and she ended up reaching out to me and then we ended up talking about business but we ended up connecting on a more personal like quickly like she you know opened up to me and stuff like that so <sighs> we had a lot in common like she was you know going through separation i was struggling in my marriage if i had to be honest but not separation and i was just trying to encourage her so much to just like do you know not do whatever you can but you know you stop yeah so anyway we our relationship probably our friendship probably lasted for about a year and you know i will admit she was still on top of her stuff like she still had a lot of goals in mind she was still keeping her like herself sane by you know keeping in the forefront that i still have a life that i have to live even though i'm separating from my husband so i have to get my life together me i wasn't there like i was i don't know mentally i was just in another place like it was crazy so she was making steps forward because eventually we stopped talking about um we stopped talking about you know marriage stuff and ended up getting into like okay goals and stuff that we wanted to accomplish and she y'all like at that time she had very straightforward goals she knew what she wanted to do she was writing a book um about what she was going through she also was getting into like helping other women get out of toxic relationships that's pretty much what she was in and she was helping other women get out of toxic relationships so she was very straightforward she was just like as she was going through this she was focused on you know okay this is what i want to do and she took that opportunity of her separation to propel herself into her growth and i wasn't there yet i was just kind of all over the place with a lot of stuff and honestly y'all even though like i was a i'm a good encourager i 
I don't know. Like we we started talking about goals and stuff, and once we got on that, she was making strides and accomplishing her goals, but I wasn't. Like we had planned to like check in with each other weekly and get on the phone. She was all down for that, but every time I would talk to her, she had everything on point. For me, I was still all over the place because I didn't know what I wanted to do at the time. So yeah, my life was just my life just sucked at that time, y'all. <laughs> It really did. So, um, eventually, like, I, we started to fall off. Um, and y'all know, sometimes I get burnt out in relationships pretty early on. And even at that time, I just didn't know how to show up and be a friend just because of what I was going through. And I feel like I had been burnt by previous relationships, friendships. And I was just like, when, but when women would come into my life that had themselves together, those were the ones that I was just like, oh my God, I feel, I don't know, um, like some type of intimidation, you know, like, dang, she's a really good friend. She should, and I should have took that more as motivation, but at that time I just went on that level. So eventually we stopped talking for a while. She would check in every now and then. I seen her like just making her stride. She wrote her book. She got it out there. She was doing events. She was speaking. And I'm just sitting right here like... I don't know what to do with my life. And now that I look back on it, it's just like, man, you know, Crystal, you got, <laughs> I, first of all, I'm beyond that level of telling myself I got to get my life together. Like I'm over telling myself that because if I keep saying that, then it's like, I'm not going to make moves. I'm just going to keep telling myself, get your life together, but I have to start making moves. And, um, yeah so eventually we didn't talk for a while and she ended up sending me a text and i cried at the time my husband was in the car i cried at the time when she sent me the text but now you know as i had thought about it this was a couple years ago it's about two years ago maybe i don't know um she sent me a text saying it was a long text message too and she sent it saying like you know she was pretty much breaking up with me as a friend and I even get commend her for that because she knew what where she was in her life. And she knew she did, couldn't even have people like me. Even though I was a good encourager, I was showing up, trying to just help her. And then when we got on another topic and it wasn't about separation and marriage and stuff like that and struggles, she was like, I'm not struggling no more. I got to do what I got to do because I got to take care of my family. And I got to keep moving forward beyond this situation. So she really got on top of her stuff and that made me kind of like back up because i i felt like every time we got on the phone it was nothing for me but it was always something for her she was accomplishing or getting done she was just so focused and she broke up with me through text message and she was just like um you know where i am in my life she was she wrote it very well but where i am in my life i don't you know i don't feel like we're on the same page anymore we don't like i'm looking for friends that show up and are um consistent persistent and you know we haven't talked in a while you haven't been that plus she was pretty much telling me reading in between the lines like and you're not doing nothing you're not trying to move beyond what you're going through <laughs> right now so um yeah i am you know i'm gonna move forward and end our relationship and woo, even thinking about it right now because i remember how i felt when i read it um even think about it right now it was like man you know it takes strength to do that first of all to take make you know to stand up for yourself and i wasn't there either um said so she had boundaries that she was very uh straightforward on that too she had boundaries like she was like and i just can't have friendship you know people like you in my life right now and it's not that i was a bad person I just wasn't consistent. I eventually I had fell off and I wasn't consistent cuz I just, you know, felt like I wasn't doing anything with my life. I wasn't accomplishing any goals or anything and she just pretty much I'm not I'm a, I'm not about talking and not moving forward. Like I am about making strides forward and really getting my life on point. And we didn't talk anymore after that. I cried. My husband was in the car. I let him read the text message and I and I felt like Whew, I felt like, man, dang, like, I'm tired of people leaving me. <laughs> and that's, I think that's what really hurt, too, because I thought I had a really good friendship. And then it's like she was gone, you know? So 
I was like, oh my God, like people always do. I'm so tired of this. Like, why can I keep friendships and women in my life that are strong? But now I'm getting it. I'm getting it because I'm repelling these women. Like they're not sticking because I even have another friend that is like that too in my life. And she's very accomplished. And my fear is what got in the way of, because I, you know, she, she the bomb. She always encouraged me and stuff like that. But she was also another person I've known for years. Like, I met her when I had my first son. Like, he was only probably two, maybe three. And we've been friends ever since, but it hasn't been a consistent thing, you know. She'll still reach out to me. Hey, girl, I thought about you. She'll encourage me to keep moving forward because she sees the potential of what I'm trying to do. But it's still up to me at the end of the day. And I understand why women who know what they want out of life will put their distance between other women who don't know what they want. That's toxic. That's so toxic now that I'm thinking about it. Because you have to know who should be around you, who you need to be around. So I'm even understanding now like when people say you are the average of the five people that you hang around it's true because i've had so many great women come into my life but because of my lack of consistency and fear and dealing with all of this rejection and woe is me and marriage and feeling like my life is constantly falling apart these women will leave me like i i had the best mentor like I was like, God, how does this happen? When she came into my life, and I always reflect on this point. I'm not trying to hold on to it, but it was a lesson. When she came into my life, it was because I was being consistent with my with Fearless Money, Inc. And I was posting content. I was doing podcasts. I was just on it. And this was when I first got pregnant with Serenity. So this was 2019. I had her 2020. So 2019, I was being very consistent with Fearless Money. And um, I posted something. How do we become friends? I don't know. And the crazy thing is that I started, um, like somehow I came, I started seeing her name. Cause she's in the industry that I, I'm, I really ultimately, you know, want to flourish in. She's in the financial industry and she does financial coaching. She's, you know, she's doing, she's done so many things that I want to do. Um, that I want to do. And I ended up following her on Instagram and then I ended up friending her on Facebook, but I didn't know this lady. I was like, Oh, so-and-so. And I think I had seen her name before, but it wasn't until that time that I saw her. And so when I sent her a friend request, I still really didn't know who she was and what she was doing. And then I was being really consistent. I even remember what content I posted that she commented on. And then she ended up sending me a DM or something like that. And I, I remember it was the podcast, your... Um, your journey to billions won't look like my journey to billions or something like that and i think that's the was the one that she commented on and then it just opened up doors and all of this happened in probably like a two month span of me friending her and she became my mentor and she was my she 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 mentored me for like uh probably you know, a good six, I say five, six months. And even at that time, she she would get on the phone with me, y'all, and she would just pour into me for like two or three hours. She would pour into me. And I just really needed, I needed her at that time. But even at that time, I still wasn't making strides forward. Like I was consistent when she found me. But then after that, I started to fall off. But one thing she told me before she let me know and she just she was just like the other friend that i was talking about like she let me go in a very easy way because she was like my mentoring pro program is about to change and i won't be mentoring for a while and stuff like that and then when i do you know she pretty much has some set guidelines of like 
what you had to be doing to be mentored but she sent me an email letting me know like i wanted to be, you to be one of the first to know what is going on and y'all i wasn't even on the level to even stay in her mentorship program like so yeah it was just it's showing like i just i have all these great people coming to my life and then i used to cry about why they leaving me but it it only it was only because it was like i wasn't trying to grow where these people was growing too you know like i was i had them and i just i was grateful but and not saying that not saying that people are going to stay in your life forever you know what i'm saying like they're not going to stay in your life forever but the time that they're in your life is for a reason i think i really did not recognize at the time like when certain people were in my life it, it, I'm telling y'all, every relationship, even, um, I mean, somebody from my church, you know, I was just so, um, I, I admired her when I first saw her and I didn't even know her, but it, we were at another church and then that church ended up going, you know, different ways. And then here's my last story. I don't even know why I got on this, but Hey, I guess it's what I was supposed to talk about. Um, but she was on worship. She just seemed so confident. And here I am feeling like, oh my God, I was just, I almost felt like she was a celebrity in my eyes. Cause you know, when I used to see women back then doing things that I wanted to do, but I was just so afraid to do. I was like, oh my God, I would love to be friends with her. I just wanted to be in the company of people like that. And it's not even that you know, I was trying to do stuff. It just, I wanted to be surrounded by women like that. So when I first saw her on worship, I was like, oh, I would love to meet her. But in a sense, it was almost like I didn't have access to her. I, I put myself in that place. Like, who am I to, you know? So eventually time worked itself out where me and her ended up becoming very, very close. Like we called each other sisters and stuff like that because we ended up going to like the church that we i first saw her at went a different way and then she started going to another church and i, I just like i know it was god like kept saying to ask her where she go to church at so i ended up finding her on facebook and sending her a message and asking her where she go to church at because i was like i noticed you don't go to you know this church anymore and um she told me and then that's how i ended up at our previous church that we just left we were there for like three years um yeah pretty much three years and me and her became very close and she had always been this confident woman like anything she put her mind to she was gonna do it i watched her evolve and even go through um, a divorce and all of this stuff too and I was one of the ones that, you know, I would try to encourage her. She would confide in me. But as she was going through that, she didn't let that stop her. She also put herself in a position too. Like the first woman I was just telling y'all about is like she was going through a, uh, a separation divorce. But she also positioned herself at the same time. Like, okay, I got a life to live outside of this. I got something that God wants me to do. And that doesn't stop because I'm going through a separation or a divorce. So, I mean, I've, like, when I say I saw everything that she went through pretty much, like, I saw everything. But she still pushed through it all and did what she had to do, even while fighting, trying to fight for her marriage she was just going through a lot but she like she still pushed through and got herself together and i watched her like evolve into this beautiful woman just like the other lady i talked about so at first i was like lord why are you sending women in my life who are going through divorce and separation and then now i'm just like i get it though like I get it you know they stuck through they were like i'm not giving up on me because i'm going through this that is could 
could tear me down it's the way that they responded and the choices that they made and for me i was going through stuff and i was just letting it tear me down piece by piece brick by brick like i felt like there is no way that i can push through this hardship right now or conquer this mountain and push through to be the woman that i need to be that is how i felt and even though i didn't go through a separation at that time i mean i wasn't talking to anybody about it but i wanted to i was trying to leave my husband i was trying to divorce him i mean that it, it just it it is what it is and i felt like i couldn't do that because it was where i had put myself at in my mind i felt like you know there's no way i can do this and do this i watched both of these women go from being women who just you know they were stay-at-home moms they weren't really working and stuff like that their husbands were working so pretty much they didn't have control over their lives but then when they made the decision to say okay this is it like i'm not living like this they got up on their feet and did what they had to do me y'all i had never been that type of woman i had never been that type of woman and you know i believe that that was the lesson to learn at that time like christy you got to get on your feet girl you got to push through and do what you got to do for yourself and it was just like every time i tried to push through and say no i'm gonna do this something would just come and i allowed to tear me down like i would just allow it to tear me down so that's why I found myself always in constant cycles. I feel like I'm starting over or feeling like, because I didn't know how to go through this over here that is could ultimately tear me down. It hurts, but also be over here and still be strong. Like God did not say that we wouldn't go through anything, you know? And even in my, and the things that would tear me down, it was always people. So whether it was my parents, it was my husband, it was people would come into my life and leave. It was always people in relationships. And I would always wonder why, like, why do they treat me like this? Why am I going through this? Why, you know, people leave me? Why am I being treated this way? Like, why nobody see the value in me? Why doesn't anyone that's how i felt i was just i felt like a victim like i was in prison and i was in jail and i was just i had succumbed to these people and that was what was taking over my mind and y'all it was whew. so lesson learned and and i know like who i am but i just was never willing to push through for that woman. I just wasn't willing to push through for her, the crystal that I know that I am. And now I'm at a point where I'm just like, okay, if I don't put some boundaries in place for myself, my life is gonna continue to be in shambles. People are gonna feel like they can come into my life and do whatever they want, cause I allowed them to. And I'm talking about everybody. And then move on. And I'm like, mm -mm, I ain't having that no more. Mm -mm. Just be settling for the craziness and stuff like that. And y'all, 